everyone. Thank you so much for joining me right here on Actual English. My name is Jennifer Clyde. We have come a long way. I hope you have been enjoying the topics that I've been bringing uh, each and every day. Today we'll be talking about a happy, I guess, gathering. We'll talk about get-togethers and we'll focus on company get-togethers. We often call them huishiks in Korean, right? But when it comes to get-togethers, uh, they can be get-togethers that you may have with friends. friends from school, friends at work, just company people, co-workers, uh, you can have get-togethers with them. So a get-together does not only mean h e s i k it just means a gathering where people gather together and have a good time. Maybe have a few drinks or you can have some good food as well. Okay, so today it's time for lesson 49. Let's talk about company get-togethers. I love company get-togethers. Really? Yeah, I do. I didn't think you'd be the type to really enjoy them. Free food, free <laughs> drinks, rub some elbows with people in high places. Oh, yeah. so you're schmoozing, sucking up to the boss sometimes. A little bit. Networking is key. It's true. It's yes. who you know, exactly. not what you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, and I'm looking forward to um, a company get-together that I'm having in a couple of days. Oh, really? Yes. I think it's a really great opportunity to let your hair down, you know? Yeah. Show a different side of yourself. Exactly. And that's how you can build relationships, too. Like, stronger relationships, um, Everybody wants to be so professional in the workplace. Sure. And this kind of, like you said, you let your hair down. You can kind of chat about things that you normally can't within the workplace. So yeah, it's, it's a, a good, good opportunity to get to know each other, like on a personal level. Right? Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, I do believe you should act professionally in those settings as well, because they're your co-workers. <laughs> you don't want to take it too far, right? Right. There's a level of closeness that shouldn't be... I guess, uh, breached. You shouldn't overstep the mark. Yes, exactly. If you get too friendly, then the next day is going to be very awkward at the office. So embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, so I work part-time, but I also go to school uh, mm. full-time. And we have a lot of school... get-togethers as well okay. so with professors and Ooh. we'll have like um just happy hour with the professors and i think that's a really really great opportunity to to get to know your professor better and to talk about things that aren't on the like syllabus in yeah. class right so you can talk about just everything and everything from pop culture <laughs> to what's the best A uh, restaurant in town. So sure. those are great opportunities. Yeah, too. and once you get closer like that, then uh, in the workplace or even at school, you know, you feel more comfortable just approaching your professor or your boss about other personal issues, work issues. I think it helps build better relationships that helps the work or your study. Exactly. But remember to keep that line distinct as well. Don't push it <laughs> too far and get too personal. Sure, not too many personal questions. <laughs> Okay, welcome back everyone. Now we just had a chance to listen to today's actual talk between Peter and Rachel. And when I was listening to them talking about company get-togethers, I was quite surprised, especially because Rachel said that she really enjoys these get-togethers. Not many people do. Some people don't like to go to these get-togethers because they feel like they have to drink, which is... Uh, Quite common in Korea, once you go to these get-togethers, yeah, it almost always involves drinking, in drinking, in drinking. But it doesn't always have to do with drinking. You can get together, have good food, chit-chat about this and that, and really get close or get to know people better at these settings. So let's take a look at the actual talk conversation line by line. Here we go. Rachel says, I love company get-togethers. Now, that is how she starts today's conversation, but let's take a look at the sentence. The sentence alone is not very difficult. It's not complicated, but I do want to stress this word. That's our topic for the day. Now, since it is company get-togethers, we're talking about a gathering or a get-together with people from work. with your co-workers or even your boss. But it's very important to stress get. Get together. Get together is a noun. It means a gathering. But if you say get together and stress together, it means, well, hey, let's get together. Let's gather. So in that case, it becomes a verb. 
Okay, so when you talk, when you want to talk about hishiks, okay, these gatherings, always stress yet together. Okay, got it? Is that clear? Okay. Anyhow, Rachel says she loves company get-togethers. And then Peter says, hey, I didn't think you would. You'd be the type to really enjoy them. Them meaning, obviously, company get-togethers. So, when you say I didn't think you would be the type to so-and-so, it means that you are quite surprised to learn something about someone. So he's saying, well, I didn't know. Well, that's a surprise. I didn't think you would be the type to, type to really enjoy these company get-togethers. And then she says, well, why not? Free food, free drinks, and then rub some elbows with people in high places. Okay. Now, the beginning is quite easy. Free food and free drinks. You don't have to pay for them because someone else is paying for them. But what about this one? Rub elbows with someone. There's also rub shoulders with someone. It basically means to socialize. Just, you know, mingle with people and talk with people. Okay? So rub elbows with people means to, I guess, sit next to each other and get to know each other talk with one another, socialize with people. With a, uh, in high places. High places meaning, yes, people at a higher position. So perhaps people like your boss, okay? So she says, hey, these gatherings are great. These company get-togethers are great opportunities. You get free food, free drinks, and a chance to rub elbows with people up there, high up above. Peter says, so, you're schmoozing, sucking up to the boss sometimes. Now this, he says jokingly. Now schmooze, schmooze, schmoozing. Schmooze is just a slang. It's a very casual, informal word for chit-chatting, okay? Getting intimate with someone, but often, yeah, socializing, chit-chatting with someone, okay? And suck up to someone, suck up to someone kind of means to, I guess, really try hard to get on the person's good side. This is mainly to gain an advantage, okay? So you may suck up to the boss, perhaps to get some benefits, okay? So, Jokingly, he says, ah, so you're smoozing, a smoozing, sucking up to the boss sometimes. And then Rachel says, what? Yeah, a little bit. Networking is key. She says, yeah, a little bit. There's nothing wrong with it because networking is key. Key here means is very important. So networking means talking to people, meeting new people, building a network, building new relationships. That's all networking. It's key. It's very important. So why not do that? Now he says, it is true. It's who you know, not what you know. Okay. What does that mean? He agrees and he says, yeah, come to think of it, you're right. It's all about who you know, meaning the people you know, not what you know. Meaning, no matter how much you know about something, if you don't know any people, thus, mm, if you don't have a network, well, there's no point, okay? Knowing a lot of people, networking is more important than knowing a lot of things, okay? Having knowledge. She says, and I'm looking forward to a company get-together, okay, that I'm having in a couple of days. So soon she has to attend a company get-together. And Peter says, I think it's a great opportunity, a really great opportunity to let your hair down. Okay, let one's hair down. Let your hair down. Now, as I always tell you, if you come across a phrase, an idiom, or a word that you don't know, at least try to picture it in your mind, okay? So try picturing letting your hair down, okay? Imagine you have long hair. It's up in a bun or a ponytail. If you let it down, what are you doing? Doesn't it look comfortable? It may feel comfortable too, right? So letting one's hair down kind of means to relax, enjoy the moment. 
have a good time. You know, just be yourself. Okay, so let one's hair down means to act casually, comfortably, and relax. So he says it's a great opportunity to kind of let your hair down and show a different side of yourself.、Mm. Oftentimes, when you're at the workplace, you have to be very polite. You can't really be yourself, right? But when you're with your friends, you're yourself. You don't have to be polite all the time. You can sit like this. And not only like this. So that is what he's saying. Show a different side of yourself. Okay. Now Rachel says exactly, and that's how you can build relationships too. Build a relationship means to make a relationship or make relationships stronger, or even meet new people. And she says everybody wants to be so professional in the workplace. Workplace meaning at your workplace, your office, the place you work. But at a get together, you can chat about things that you normally can't at the workplace. It's true. So once again, everybody wants to be so professional. Where at the workplace, at the office, for example. But at these get togethers, you can be a bit more relaxed, right? Just have a good time. And you can chat about things. You can talk about things that you normally can't or don't at the office, at the workplace. Peter says it's a good opportunity to get to know each other on a personal level. Okay, we all know the、uh, above sentence. Good opportunity, get to know each other, learn about one another on a personal level. Though, if you say on. A personal level, it just means privately, okay? Personally, simply put. So, moving on, Rachel says, "Yeah, but at the same time, you should act professionally in those settings as well." So, just because it is a company get together, and just because you can talk about other things that you normally don't talk about at the office. Just because you can be casual and relaxed doesn't mean you can talk about anything. You still have to be a bit professional. That is what she's saying. At the same time, you should act professionally in those settings. Those settings meaning company get-togethers. And then she says because they are they're your coworkers. That's right. It's always important. It's good to be cautious, right? Okay. Now Peter says you don't want to take it too far. Take something too far. Okay, excuse me, too far. If you take something too far, you are going overboard. You are doing too much of something. Actually, you are going over the limit. Uba hada, exactly. So he says you don't want to take it too far. Set a limit and don't go over that limit. You shouldn't overstep the mark. Okay, you also say overstep your boundaries. Now, overstep the mark means to say something or act in a certain way that may that may offend the other person. So this is just a way of saying you shouldn't overstep the mark. Means you should be careful. Be careful of what you do and what you say. Now, once again. Overstep the mark means to go over the boundary, go over the limit, and say things that would offend others, or do things that you shouldn't do because it could offend others. And he says, if you get too friendly, this means too friendly.、Uh, if you act too casually, I guess, then the next day is going to be very awkward at the office. I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about because sometimes you have a few drinks and then you get to know each other. You talk about this and that. You may overstep the mark, go over a certain limit, and then the next day you go to work at the office. You feel so embarrassed and so awkward. That is what he's saying. Okay, so if you get too friendly, yeah, then the next day you're going to feel or be very awkward at the office or at the workplace. Rachel says, "Ah,、oh, yeah, so embarrassing. I work part time, but I also go to school full time. 
So she works and goes to school, and she says, and we have a lot of school get-togethers. Mm -hmm. Meaning get-togethers with school friends, and she says as well with professors. Okay, or also as well as professors as well. You can have a lot of school get-togethers as well with professors, and we'll just have happy hour with the professors. What is happy hour? Often when you go to restaurants or cafes, or I think usually in the past. You would only see happy hour at、uh, bars, for example, where they sell drinks at a cheaper price, perhaps from 4 p.m. until 6 p.m.、Uh, when there are least customers. But happy hour, they have happy hour at restaurants. Even they may have certain dishes and sell them at a cheaper price. So what she's talking about is maybe hanging out with school friends and the professor and having happy hour, meaning just go out for a light drink, maybe. And to enjoy some good food as well, I think that's a really great opportunity to get to know your professor, get closer, build a closer relationship with your professor, and talk about everything and anything. I think Rachel said everything and everything, or anything and anything. But I guess you should say everything and anything. You can talk about anything possible. From pop culture to what's the best restaurant in town. So here we come to an end to today's actual talk conversation. She's talking about having to go to a get together very soon, and she thinks it's a wonderful opportunity to learn about people, to get to know people, to build strong relationships for your future.、Uh, but it's just fun overall. I wonder what you think about get-togethers. Take a listen to the actual talk conversation one more time. I love company get-togethers. Really? Yeah, I do. I didn't think you'd be the type to really enjoy them. Free food, free <laughs> drinks, rub some elbows with people in high places. Oh, yeah. So you're schmoozing, sucking up to the boss sometimes. A little bit. Networking is key. It's true. It's、yes. who you know,、exactly. not what you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know. And I'm looking forward to、um, a company get together that I'm having in a couple of days. Oh, really?、Yes. I think it's a really great opportunity to let your hair down. You know,、yeah. show a different side of yourself. Exactly, and that's how you can build relationships too, like stronger relationships.、Um, Everybody wants to be so professional in the workplace,、sure. and this kind of, like you said, you let your hair down. You can kind of chat about things that you normally can't within the workplace.、So、yeah, it's, it's a, a good a, good opportunity to get to know each other, like on a personal level.、Right? Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, I do believe you should act professionally in those settings as well, because they're your coworkers. <laughs> you don't want to take it too far, right? Right. There's a level of closeness that shouldn't be. I guess、uh, breach. You shouldn't overstep the mark. Yes, exactly. If you get too friendly, then the next day is going to be very awkward at the office. So embarrassing. <laughs>、yeah. um, but you know, so I work part time, but I also go to school、uh, mm. full time, and we have a lot of school get-togethers as well.、Okay. So with professors, and、Ooh. we'll have like、um, just happy hour with the professors, and I think that's a really, really great. Opportunity to to get to know your professor better and to talk about things that aren't on the like syllabus in、yeah. class, right? So you can talk about just everything and everything from pop culture <laughs> to what's the best、uh, restaurant in town. So、sure. those are great opportunities. Yeah,、too. and once you get closer like that, then、uh, in the workplace or even at school, you know, you feel more comfortable just approaching your professor or your boss about other personal issues, work issues. I think it helps build. Better relationships that helps the work or your study. Exactly, but remember to keep that line distinct as well. Don't push it too far and get too personal. Sure, not too many personal questions. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. That was our actual talk conversation. One more time. Now it's time for actual expressions. Let's begin with some phrases, idiomatic expressions, and vocab words. We had rub elbows in today's actual talk, right? So rub elbows. As I mentioned, you can also rub shoulders with someone. 
So often in uh, American English and British English, these expressions are used differently. So rub elbows or rub shoulders with someone means the same thing. It means to closely associate with somebody. All right. Okay. So please do keep that in mind. If you forget what it means, just imagine. Picture the words in your mind. Rub elbows, rub shoulders. You're next to each other, right? Okay. So closely associate with someone. What about schmooze? Schmooze. The pronunciation is quite simple. Schmooze. Okay. It means to chit chat, kind of gossip even. You can chit chat with someone just to get on their good side, right? For your advantage. Okay. Or even for self promotion. Just to, I guess, boast about yourself, you can schmooze to others or schmooze with others. What about overstep the mark or overstep the boundary? Yeah, it means to say something or do something that will offend other people. Something you don't want to do. Here, let's take a look at some patterns then. Now, be the type two. Remember, Peter said, "I didn't think you were the type to enjoy、uh, get-togethers." So what you can say is, he's the type to talk behind people's backs. He is the type of person to talk behind people's backs. That is also an idiom. Talk behind somebody's back means to in Korean to tamha, right? So say bad things about a person, not to them or not in front of them, but secretly to others. Not a good thing to do. So you can say he's the type to talk behind people's back or backs. I didn't think you were the type to like heavy metal. Yeah, sure. So let's take it into the past. I didn't think you were the type to like heavy metal. Say, for example, if you saw a female, a very feminine woman, she's always very quiet and she's shy.、Uh, she's always just by herself all the time. And then you see her listening to heavy metal, and she's having a good time. Then you would be surprised, right? So in that case, you can say, "Hey, I didn't think you were the type to like heavy metal." Okay, let's move on. Now, suck up to someone was what? Suck up to someone. Suck up to someone. Try to get on someone's good side, right? You can do that to your boss. Don't suck up to me. It's not going to do you any good. If someone is trying to make you feel good by, you know, saying nice things to you, you can say, "Hey, don't suck up to me. It's not going to do you any good." Let's check out another one. He always sucks up to. Somebody, he always sucks up to the boss. He's always doing that for the boss, this for the boss. Always trying to look good. Okay, in that case, you can say he or she always sucks up to our boss. Let's try one more. Are you sucking up to her? You can say that too. Are you sucking up to me? You can say that too. If somebody all of a sudden, hmm, let's say, shows interest in you and tries to be nice to you, and you're thinking. Hmm, why is she doing this? Does she want something from me? Does he want something from me? You could ask. Hey, are you sucking up to her? Are you sucking up to me? What do you want? Okay, so these are some questions you can ask someone, or some sentences and phrases you can mention when talking to someone about, you know, sucking up to someone, trying to get on the good side of someone. Okay, that is a wrap for today's actual expressions. Even though I'm、uh, fairly young in age, I have had some working experience, and from what I've gone through, coming to get-togethers can be pretty fun.、Um, usually, there's really good food, and you get to mingle with a lot of people that you don't maybe you don't normally talk to them outside of work. But that could either be lots of fun and very engaging. Or extremely awkward. So、uh, if you get together,、um, I'm not get together. If you get along well with your coworkers or、um, you work well with them, then company、uh, parties can be a lot of fun. But let's say you don't really speak with your coworkers a lot, or you don't get along well, then maybe it's a little bit more awkward, and you 
might not have a good time. But if you do feel that you're awkward with coworkers, then company get-togethers are a good opportunity to um, get to know people that you don't normally talk to. And from my experience, or from actually from my mom's experience, she loves her. Uh, she loves parties at her workplace. Like they usually um, have really awesome catering, and then she enjoys like. Uh, talking to her coworkers, and she's really close friends with a lot of them. Like we go to her friends' uh, kids' birthday parties sometimes. So company get-togethers are a good way to know other people at your workplace. Well, welcome back, everyone. That was today's actual story. So thanks to Halima once again. Halima told us about the general idea of get-togethers, her opinion of get-togethers. Sometimes it can be good, sometimes it can be awkward, not so good. Let's check it out. Company get-togethers can be fun. They can be pretty fun. They can be, they may not be, but they could be. She's talking about the possibility. What else? But if you don't get along, this is the opposite situation, then it's a bit more awkward and you might not have a good time. So here, as you can tell, she's given us two examples. The first one was, if you are good at meeting new people, if you enjoy meeting new people and mingling with people, then you will most likely have a good time. But if you are the opposite type, if you have a difficult time getting along with new people or even conversing with strangers, then most likely it'll be a little bit awkward and you might not have a good time at these get-togethers. That's true. I'm the latter type. I don't get along well with people I don't know, so I don't really like get-togethers. It feels awkward, and I usually don't have a good time. All right, that is a wrap for today's actual story. Even though I'm uh, fairly young in age, I have had some working experience. And from what I've gone through, coming and get-togethers can be pretty fun, um, usually. There's really good food and you get to mingle with a lot of people that you don't know, maybe you don't normally talk to them outside of work, but that could either be lots of fun and very engaging or extremely awkward. So uh, if you get together, um, I'm not get together, if you get along well with your coworkers or um, you work well with them, then company parties can be a lot of fun. But let's say you don't really speak with your coworkers a lot or you don't get along well, then maybe it's a little bit more awkward and you might not have a good time. But if you do feel that you're awkward with coworkers, then company get-togethers are a good opportunity to um, get to know people that you don't normally talk to. And from my experience, or from actually from my mom's experience, she loves her, uh, she loves parties at her workplace. Like they usually um, have really awesome catering and then she enjoys like, uh, talking to her coworkers, and she's really close friends with a lot of them. Like we go to her friends' uh, kids' birthday parties sometimes. So company get-togethers are a good way to know other people at your workplace. Did you enjoy today's lesson, everyone? Well, today we talked about company get-togethers. I do stress one last time. Now, get-togethers. If you stress the get, it becomes a noun and it means gathering. But if you say, hey, let's get together, used as a verb, the stress should go on the together. Get together. Let's get together. We're having a company get-together. Okay, I hope you can tell the difference. All right, next time I'll join you with another topic. Let's move on to national holidays. There are many, many holidays throughout the year, but they're national holidays we'll talk about. National holidays, meaning the holidays of Korea, of a certain country, that is. In the meantime, come to our homepage. If you have any questions or comments, you can post it up at www.ebse.co.kr. Just look for Actual English with me, Jennifer Clyde. Okay, until next time, take care and... Bye for now.